All right, in today's video, a little quick overview of um, pseudo review of the um, Ministry of Sound Audio S Plus. Unfortunately, I already took this apart uh, like a couple of weeks ago, even. Um, it didn't work at all when I got it from my uh, from my nephew. And I'm making this video just to talk a bit about this speaker because it is so fucking well made. And I don't know who engineered it or who the lead designer or whatever they call it was, but he did a stand-up job. And if you're here, like, that would be a virtual handshake. Anyway, <clears throat> so, it wasn't weird at all. Um, and so this looks pretty weird without the, like, normally it has two grills, right? You've probably seen the thumbnail. Uh, those are very robust and you can't really and they're glued all the way around so there's really no good way of of removing everything without damaging it right or without bending it or it probably is but i don't i didn't know if this was completely totaled or yeah so it is what it is anyway so the way this works is there is one cell that resides in this uh 118650 cell that resides in here I can't really see it with this, and I'm not going to take this out. There's absolutely nothing on the bottom, just the 18650 cell. Um, exactly, so the cell is at least 3000 milliamps, because I charged it, and I I shoved about 3000 milliamps into it. Um, it's, it's not really a good estimate. It might even be way more than 3000, because the way this works is the CSR chip... I don't know if you can see this, but there's a CSR chip and on it is written only CSR 86, so I have absolutely no idea what kind of 86 this is, so whether it's 8645, I would assume it's that due, due to the package, right? You can get them in, in this small package, but for all I know it could be a 70 or 75, right? 8675 or 70, I don't know. Um, exactly, and these chips have the facility to charge a battery, right? So they're so small, so as to fit in uh, in headphones and shit, right? So wouldn't it be great if the Bluetooth chip would also charge your lithium battery, right? And manage the charge and cut off and battery management system uh, tasks. And it can, right? All of them can, as far as I know, at least. Uh, but but it was, right, for, for headphone batteries... That was like a hundred milliamps at most, right? So it had an internal buck regulator um, inside the chip, so pretty badass shit. Uh, or it might have had an external pass transistor, but I'm pretty sure it didn't. I'm pretty sure everything was contained into the chip, right? So this is the same in this case, and it charges at one amp. And it definitely doesn't dissipate the entire amp, like doesn't isn't linear, because it only gets lukewarm i'd say right so you can touch it you can definitely know it's doing something but not and um and so yeah that's pretty impressive that they're using this right uh that they're using this approach right of not using an extra part but leveraging the most out of uh, the bluetooth chip uh, they're controlling the top uh blue led with it and they have some dimming functions in it which kind of leads me to believe it's a bit more than the 8645 because on the 8645 I'm not sure if you can do dimming of the LED although you, I, who knows anyway um, exactly so you have the 86 whatever chip charging the 18650 and the chip they use this would be the amplifier over here and they can probably even see it right it, it is a TPA 3130 and uh, the keen-eyed amongst you will know that these start working at about 8 volts, right? So how the hell are they getting it to work on one cell? Well, uh, this choke here is part of a um, boost converter, right? And so what they're doing is boosting the whatever the cell is up to 8.6 volts. And they probably get an enable signal from the, uh, from the 86XX chip. Right, so that it doesn't keep boosting it when the when the battery is dead, right? 
Um, and this gets 8.6 volts. I've measured it and these caps both charge to 8.6 volts. And um, and yeah, this is how they get the get the higher wattage, right? Because you can't you can only get so much from from one cell, right? At, at three volts, you really won't get much power, even if you short the output out. It's it's not gonna be a a big enough amount of watts, right? Anyway, um, moving on, uh, this had a USB port. So this first of all, the problem with this is it was submerged underwater or had a lot of water in these cavities for a long time because this uh, port was completely fried like it was completely corroded it was absolutely there were absolutely no pins this uh, little hole here was a reset button so again a very nice touch right you never know when some shit happens that will lock this up right because this is always connected to power the 86 chip and CSR do very stand up stand up work right but who knows what if it does reset right what if it does jam and so they did put a, a reset button and this had corroded to a point where it was welded shut kind of and so it was keeping the whole thing resetted because the cell was at 3.3 .3 volts when I found it so technically should have been fine and the jack was also completely shot so I think this was an aux in right what else could it be uh, although it might have been headphones I have no idea I'll put it in the description what it was point is I've I've removed all of that I've sealed uh, the jack with a uh, chip I think it was a flash chip and uh, populated my own uh, micro USB wire and the cool thing is it seems to use the data pins as well right so it does have everything is labeled on the board extremely nicely right so USB 5 volts, right, data minus, data plus, and then USB negative. And then this indeed isn't marked, but it's the reset switch, so you kind of know what it is by, by looking at it. And what's also very interesting, uh, first of all, this passive radiator is pretty badass. I've never seen anything this wide. Please note this, this hole here. So this is actually a piece of plastic that's covering a hole to access these pins which are the programming headers which is the programming header anyway and um, they labeled it oh my god and so basically you can program your uh, 8645 uh, or whatever so I'm gonna connect to it and, and do a dump of this and make a dump of this if it works and so yeah kudos to the engineer for labeling the shit out right like it really costs them absolutely nothing and when someone takes their shit apart 50 years ahead instead of this going into the bin right now i know exactly what i need to do to reprogram it if it's necessary i know exactly what the wires are so it makes my life a lot easier right and it's not like your competition is gonna not find out what the pins are right if they really want to so and plus this design isn't is, is good but it's nothing extremely special. It's quite interesting that they use the booster with the more powerful chip, but yeah. Um, yeah, so very nicely engineered. I would even say over-engineered. And uh, sound-wise, I don't know, it's decent, right? For this size, it's, it's pretty loud. And I like my stuff a bit more bassy, but then you don't have the top end, the loudness, so it's, it's a fine compromise, and you can definitely listen to it. And when I got it, it actually had another problem, which unfortunately now I fixed, so I can't uh, showcase. One of the speakers was making um, making a very annoying sound. It's like it was. It's like you had a piece of paper over it, and you were holding it, and it was hitting the piece of paper, right? When the uh, cone uh, moved a bit more. And so what that ended up being is I, I actually had to pop out the speaker and what that was, one of the wires that go to the coil was was a bit too long and was hitting on the membrane, was hitting on the top side, right? And I just put a bit of silicon there and uh, yeah, moved it, jiggled it around, so I think that's fine now and should stay fine. Uh, what else can I say about this? So yeah, mainly kudos to whoever built this very solid speaker and also 
rugged as fuck, right? It's extremely robust, especially with the whole case on. You could probably crack a brick with it. Um, what else? What else? What else? I have no idea what it does when you connect it to the computer. I'll try it later and if it's something super cool. If this advertises itself as a external um, audio card, then that would be very awesome. So I'll be sure to leave that in the description. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, that's pretty much all. So if you ever come across one of these, it's worth salvaging. It's a pretty badass speaker. Alright guys, have a good one.